lost two of his first three fights. His last five fights have made for good television. Most recently, Juan won an exciting fight against Elizir Contreras. And let's go to school with Teddy's tips for Juan Valenzuela. Well, for Valenzuela, the things that I think our fans can look for tonight is to throw lead straight right hands. This is a common strategy with South Paul's, and Zavala will make this a good idea because I think he'll stand up straight in front of you. Number two, look for him to follow Zavala out the door. Valenzuela is aggressive and smart about it. He knows when to come in, and when he sees Zavala go out straight, he'll come in punching and try to catch him. And finally, to work upstairs and downstairs when inside. He's a pressure fighter. That means when you get close, you open up and take advantage of your strength and style. And here's Ernie Zavala, former standout baseball player, but he decided to follow in his late cousin Rudy's footsteps and push ahead as a pro boxer. He's 18 and two, seven knockouts for Ernie Zavala. And among his last five is the second of his two losses to Hena Hosa, a major disappointment for him. What are Teddy's tips for Ernie Zavala? For Zavala, things to watch for. Number one, to take a step back and fire a straight left hand. Zavala likes to use his legs to step out and then counter. Number two, to get caught going backwards, maybe, even though he doesn't want to. Sometimes he's too predictable, going out straight too often. And finally, to step around, not back. Expect his smart trainer, Freddie Roach, to put this into the strategy with the straight ahead Valenzuela. Go around, not straight back. James Jenkin, your referee. It's a scheduled 10-rounder. Well, Juan Valenzuela, he realizes how much winning can change your life. Since that upset of Ricardo Williams, he has signed a promotional contract with Oscar De La Hoya, and that has made a big difference. Says having the well-scheduled and promoted fights makes his preparation easier, and Oscar advises him. Juan feels both he and Oscar agree that he needs to improve some defensively, Teddy. Every once in a while, Zavala, he likes to try to box. He'll start off that right. He has that kind of idea. But then he goes straight back, stands straight up, and being a southpaw, what do we say? Look for balance when he throws straight right hand against the southpaw. Well, he threw one. And guess what? Zavala just got off the floor. The very first punch thrown and landed from Valenzuela scores a knockdown. A straight right hand in the first minute of round number one. You were talking about the defensive liabilities of Zavala. He likes to think he's a boxer. To move, use his leg, live on the outside a little bit, but he stands at least, for me, he stands too straight up. And that's why he got caught that straight right hand. Straight up and straight back. Well, this region and these local fans have seen this before from Juan Valenzuela. And he jump-started his career swarming Julio Diaz in April 2002. Again, a lot of the strategy for fighting the southpaw is to throw the straight right hand. Valenzuela came right out, throwing that straight right hand. And you know the rest. Zavala had to get himself off the canvas. A lot of times guys go in there with southpaws, there's a couple rounds of hesitancy. A couple rounds where they're not sure of themselves. They gotta find themselves. Not the case with Valenzuela. He showed he can beat a southpaw. He has confidence. He's beaten two southpaws already. And one very good one, Ricardo Williams, a silver medalist, undefeated at the time. Valenzuela believes he can handle southpaws. And he showed it so far this round. Again, Zavala wants to live on the outside, wants to try to give what Valenzuela gives him, wants to try to take what Valenzuela gives him, wants to step back a little bit, try to get the aggressive Valenzuela to reach a little bit so he can counter. Three minutes in there for Ernie Zavala. Again, Zavala 
standing straight up. The uppercut, then the right hand comes in. Very exciting fighter to watch, Juan Valenzuela. Ah, two whole days. Two. Hey, it's Juan Valenzuela, uh, confident and marching forward in the first round against Ernie Zavala. Here's the first punch, Teddy. Well, you see there, Zavala standing straight up and, as you said, going straight back. Once again, standing straight up, going straight back. Well, that's all Valenzuela had to see. He knows he's going to use the right hand against the southpaw, and he knows that his opponent is defenseless, going straight back. He's got nothing to worry about. He stepped in with a nice, solid right hand. Juan Pollo Valenzuela, an important fight for both fighters. Both men know what's on the line. For Valenzuela, he's come on stronger in the past couple years of his career. For Zavala, he only has two losses. They're to the same man, Efren Hanahosa, two split decision close calls. He feels he's knocking on the door of being ranked. Valenzuela, though, has been making plenty of noise among the junior welterweights lately. Owns upset wins over Julio Diaz. He took out heralded Olympian Ricardo Williams. And here, early on, looks very strong once again against Ernie Zavala. You know, we said in the things to look for, we said look for Zavala to get caught going straight back. And that is the biggest problem he faces right now. He stands too straight up, too stiff, and he goes straight back. Teddy Valenzuela just ate a left hand. But he is not shy about throwing and making for action fights, is he? This figured to be a pier 12 or pier 6, whatever number it is, brawl. Both these guys pleasing guys, even though Zavala tries to be the boxer, he's not great at it because of his defensive liabilities. So this figure with Valenzuela coming forward, this figured to be a real fan-pleasing fight, and we're not disappointed. When we were talking in between the first round and the second round of the opening fight tonight, we said that, Joe. We said that this almost can't help but be an exciting fight. The style's dictated. So far, so good. Now again, Zavala trying to box using his legs. There's different ways to use defense. You can block, you can move your head, you can use your legs. Zavala depends mostly on his legs. The problem with that is when your opponent closes the distance and you just use your legs, you get caught because then the liability of being straight up starts to kick in. You know what, I know it's early yet, Joe, but guess what? Believe it or not, maybe that knockdown early in the first round by Valenzuela, very early, that might hurt him. Oh, we've talked about that many times, how actually it can have a reverse effect I think on a it fighter. Is. I think it is right now because he's still got the guy in front of him. He might have in his mind disconnected for a second, thought that the night was going to be an easy night. Sure. You can never do that in a 10-round fight with a good, solid guy like Zavala. And he's looking for all headshots right now. And this has been a strong and steady round of getting back on his feet and going to work for Ernie Zavala. Of course, he scored that big straight left hand against the ropes. Great start to our main event on Friday Night Fights. And soon enough, we will be joined ringside with Oscar De La Hoya. Stay with us. Exciting first two rounds. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with your ringside. Teddy, Juan Valenzuela scored that knockdown in the first round, but look at the numbers in round number two as Zavala threw 112 punches, landing 21 of them. Flip flop the first and second round, but of course the 10 8 in that first round with the straight right hand flooring Zavala. So a slight lead for Valenzuela. See, the way Zavala boxes, he's got to be perfect with his gauging of distance. He's got to step out just at the right distance and use counters, because he depends on that. He depends on like If he depends on that all the time and he steps out at the wrong time, from a little too close or a little too that's slow, that's 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 he's going to get nailed because his head doesn't move that much. Zavala has to be really perfect 
but he steps back right at the right time. He goes back a little too late. He's going to get nailed. But if he does it right, he's going to do what he's doing now. He's going to control rounds. Stop back quickly. So Balor wants to live on the outside. Valenzuela, he wants to eat on the inside. Well, there's something to eat right there. Five, six, seven, eight. Just right. Don't keep your mouth closed. Let's see in this last minute 20 of this third round if Valenzuela can go to work. Now this is where Valenzuela needs to concentrate downstairs on the body. Because when a guy's hurt, he's going to try to survive. He's going to do just that. Move his head. He's going to try to survive. You go downstairs to the body now, you're going to freeze that end. And you get the knockout you're looking for. It's up to Valenzuela now to place those punches to the right place. I believe downstairs, not upstairs. Tries to come in over the top with that right hand and follow it up with a left. Zavala very game, but being allowed to survive this spot here, I believe because Valenzuela going to the head a little bit too much. If Valenzuela had concentrated in that last set to the body, he might have had Zavala out of here already. Actually, Valenzuela doing just what Zavala needs him to do. He's concentrating on the head, and Zavala able to clear himself a little bit and slip and slide. Zavala did just what he wanted with what happened in this round. He survived the round. Now he'll try to get back in the fight when he gets back to his corner. Great third round for Juan Valenzuela. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas now joined by the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. How are you? Good to see you guys. Hey, Oscar, good well, to see you. you must be a lot better after seeing that third round. Pretty impressive display from your fighter. Let's take a look at it. No, I feel very, uh, very pleased with his performance. And uh, like Teddy said, he does have to go to the body. It's uh, very vital, uh, especially with Zavala, that's a very, uh, very uh, crafty, very, uh, he's a veteran inside the ring, and he has to go to the body. But uh, I, I have a lot of confidence in, uh, in, in, in my fighter, uh, Pollo. <laughs> You know, he, I just noticed there, Oscar, he scored a combination between a left uppercut and a left hook. Valens Will, I noticed ever since he knocked out Juan Diaz a few fights back, he's got a real knack for throwing a left hook you don't expect. Instead of throwing it conventionally where it's this way, he'll kind of sneak in and adjust the angle sometimes and hit you that left hook you don't see. It's, it's a sneaky left hook that he's throwing, and um, it, it's kind of like a 45 that I used to throw back in the days. Um, it, it works. It's very effective, and I feel uh, Valenzuela, little by little, he's learning more. He feels very confident after winning uh, uh, against uh, Julio Diaz and against, uh, against uh, our Olympian that we had in the year uh, 2000. Of course, Ricardo Williams. So uh, Valenzuela's learning. He's only 22 years old, and uh, he's uh, stepping up in competition here with Savala, but uh, we, feel, uh, we feel confident that, uh, that he will be one of the, the, the big for boxing and he puts fannies in the seats people like to watch him he's a pleasing style he's a pleasing fighter he's uh, always game to fight and he's very exciting uh, he's one of my personal best the but golden boy with us of course oscar de la hoya wearing a couple hats nowadays in his boxing career world-class junior middleweight and a now successful promoter watching his fighter Juan Valenzuela here. He's already scored two knockdowns tonight against Ernie Zavala. And here comes Zavala, just as we saw in the second round after he was knocked down in the first round. Comes back stronger and more confident. Oscar, how do you like life as a promoter? Life is great, actually. I love being a promoter. I think I, think I can make a big change uh, with boxing. It's not going to be overnight, but I think it can happen. Uh, um, there's so many things that we can do with boxing. Uh, there's so much room for growth. Uh, just like I've been hearing Teddy over the years saying that we need a, we need a commissioner, we need someone who's going to regulate boxing. I'm all for it. I'm all for it because I think the sport needs it. Southpaw Ernie Zavala placed the left hand moments ago. Valenzuela still coming forward, shaking it off. This past weekend, you watched the big gun in your arsenal that you recently signed, Marco Antonio Barrera lose his featherweight title or the recognized featherweight championship to Manny Pacquiao your thoughts and being there and watching Barrera that night and what is in store for Barrera down the road 
I was actually heartbroken. I was heartbroken because uh, uh, obviously Manny Pacquiao, we know he's a great fighter. He beat a he beat a super champion, and I was heartbroken because it felt like if I, as if a brother was was fighting in the ring, and because I've known Barrera for a long time, we're very good friends. And uh, uh, but he he just had a night where uh, where he got beat by a better fighter, and I think that uh, after talking with Barrera um, after the fight, he's uh, he's very game to go back in the ring. Not step up with uh, Pacquiao right away, but uh, but he does want that rematch. Round number four, really good action fight between Juan Valenzuela and Ernie Zavala. Teddy Zavala once again steadying himself after being knocked down. Well, he was allowed to steady himself because Valenzuela didn't take advantage in the last round, as we were talking about, by going to the body. And sometimes you can pay a heavy price for that, not taking advantage when you have your opponent in trouble. By Valenzuela going headhunting, he's allowed Zavala to be in this position now where he's having a decent round. He allowed him to survive the last round. The body is very, very vital when it comes to uh, you having a knockdown. You have to go to the body because the, the fighter, your opponent, is, is going to expect for you to go to the chin once again. So you have to work that body. Well, our host this evening, Oscar De La Hoya, joining us ringside. Good main event you put together for us, but people want to know what's the main event that is going to be in your future. Could it be a rematch with Shane? Could it be going up to meeting Bernard at a catchweight or at 160? Or Ricardo Mayorga lingering out there. Who's out there for you, Golden Boy? Well, uh, I'll tell you my plans. Uh, I'm, I'm right now with the promoter's hat. I'm uh, taking some time off uh, these holidays, uh, spending time with the, with the family. Um, I still have the desire, I still have the fire to go out there and fight, and fight the best once again. Uh, with the Mosley fight, I've been I've been watching it. I've been I've been analyzing it. I could have done a, a lot better. I could have thrown more punches. I I could have been trained better, uh, 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 conditioning wise. Um, there's so many so much room for improvement still with, with my game, and uh, that's the exciting part of it is that I'm still I still have that fire in my belly. Question, Oscar. I'm sure a lot of the fans are begging to ask. Is Mosley a bad style for you? Is he just a bad style for you? I just, I, I don't feel that way. I just do not feel that way because the first time we fought, okay, I banged with him. I tried to outspeed him. I tried to outpower him. Big mistake. The second time around, I thought I was doing good. I thought I was uh, boxing him using my jab, but you know what? I should have used more jab. I should have used longer punches. I should have used, I should have been more aggressive. And um, those are little mistakes that we make. And uh, hopefully, uh, it's, it's like they say, three strikes and you're out. And uh, I'm, it's, it's only, uh, it's only the, uh, the, the fourth inning with uh, two strikes. So I still have, a, I still have a chance. Round number five: Juan Valenzuela and Ernie Zavala. Been an interesting fight, Valenzuela. The first punch that he landed of the night scored a knockdown. Then a left hook in the third round. But there have been moments where Zavala has fought back bravely. In that fourth round, throwing out landing, out throwing Valenzuela 67 to 27, out landing him 12 to 11. Oscar De La Hoya alongside Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas. Oscar, do you regret in any way the post-mortem and the days subsequent to the Shane Mosley fight, the way things played out with the mainstream media and the public and claiming that fight as controversial and some of the comments made by Bob Arum? Well, you know what? It's it's uh, it's amazing how the public and the uh, the people who are, are paying for the fights, the, the, the fans, uh, the support they've been giving me. Um, I did claim uh, after the fight that I would do an investigation because of the judging, uh, you know, what was going on. I thought I thought that, uh, you know, by, by be being champion and having two world titles, you have to really beat the champion. And, um, you know, after after a while uh, passed by, a few weeks passed by, I said to myself, you know, the, the fan support has been 100 percent. It's been it's been wonderful. So I'm going to I'm just going to let that go by. But I do want to to make boxing progress. I do want to change boxing in order to become a sport where it's going to last for a very long time. But we need fighters with your visibility to do that, Oscar. And that's I think, commendable. I'm glad to hear that. I think I think um, um, not just by getting together and uniting, but uh, but by taking action. I think the fighters are the ones who who have to take action. Um, I, I'm not scared to 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 confront people in, in the in, in the in the boxing world because this is 
how we attract corporate America. This is how we attract the big sponsors in order to have uh, 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 big fights on, on network television, in order to fights continue on fighting here on ESPN. Valenzuela pushes forward, and you got a busy weekend because I know you got a fight tomorrow night, fight card tomorrow night you're promoting too. I flew out from Los Angeles. Uh, we have a big, uh, pay our first pay-per-view fight uh, on the 22nd. Uh, uh, tomorrow night, uh, Saturday, it's called uh, uh, the Night of the Aztec Warriors. We have Oscar Larios, who's a WBC uh, champion, Javier Haragui, and Jose Navarro. Best of luck to you. Always great to be with you, Oscar. Thank you very much, guys. Good seeing you, Oscar. Thank you. Next time we're going to get our heads up the picture. <laughs> Before Mr. Taylor taught the world to play. Sunday night, Steve Spurrier returns to the Sunshine State. His Washington Redskins are going to be taking on Run Ricky Run and the Miami Dolphins. Redskins, Dolphins, Sunday night, 8.30. It's also available on high def on ESPN HD. You can call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network. It all starts with NFL Prime Time, presented by Miller White at 7.30 Eastern. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Halfway through this scheduled 10-rounder, Juan Valenzuela in the gold and white taking on the slick southpaw, Ernie Zavala. Zavala has hit the deck twice in this fight, but each time he has come back strongly, landing 16 out of 79 punches in that fifth round. Pretty interesting main event. We knew stylistically it was going to be, Teddy. As we did, it was going to be pleasing, and it has been pleasing. And while we were talking to Oscar, who's a real gentleman besides being all the champions he's been throughout his career, Zavala was busy sneaking back into this fight, nice and quietly, at least on my scorecard. And I think if Zavala does get it to a point where this is real tight going down the stretch or gets to the point where he can win this fight, you're going to look back at that third round and Valenzuela is going to kick himself a little bit in the pants for not going to the body when he had Zavala up against the ropes in a lot of trouble. I thought right there at that moment what was important, it didn't matter anymore about anything at that point. Zavala didn't care about that round other than getting out of that round, getting back to the corner, getting himself together, and then coming back the next round and starting to turn it around. And the only way he could do that was for Valenzuela to go head hunting, And that's what Valenzuela did. He went head hunting. He allowed Zavala in that third round to survive. And now I think Zavala's back in this fight. We know what Juan Valenzuela is capable of at any moment. He has shown the power. We've seen it many times, as have many favored fighters who thought that they were in control of the action against Valenzuela in recent years. Basically, basically. Sitting here with the golden boy, you could sense that he has a great appreciation for that sneaky left hand of Juan Valenzuela. Of course, Oscar knows exactly how to utilize that left hand, one of his main weapons throughout his career. Valenzuela does have a real good sneaky left hand. That's why I alluded to it. And De La Hoya is exactly right. Back in the fight that really put Valenzuela on the map against Julio Diaz when he scored that sensational surprise one-round knockout. It was with that left hook, not the conventional left hook, not the one that comes like the textbook from the shoulder height, the one that comes in between an uppercut and in between a hook. I believe that that Valenzuela's most destructive punch, his most effective punch. Coming on strong, trying to throw it here in the closing moments of round number six. Lands a right hand. If you're looking for a movie with holiday cheer and good... Welcome back to Friday Night Fights from Fresno, California's Selland Arena. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you ringside. Brian Kenny, Max Kellerman, all the action back in the studio. Punches through round six, 93 to 63 edge for Zavala. Interestingly enough, Zavala has outlanded Valenzuela in all six rounds. It has been the efficiency and the one single power punches by Valenzuela that have been the big scorers in this fight. Right hand in the first round that floored Zavala and a left hook in round number three. You know what's interesting in this fight? 
Right now, they're on the inside. You're not going to pick up on it. But as soon as they get outside, so Valor can hit Valenzuela before Valenzuela can hit him. Because Valenzuela puts a curve on all his punches. Even though he might have the long arms, he puts a curve on his punches. So he's got to get to a certain distance to land. There goes that half a left uppercut, half a left hook again. And I think it's the best punch for Valenzuela. And he's really effective when you're against the rope. You should not lay on the ropes if you're Zavala. Valenzuela does a good job when you're on the ropes because, again, he can come in with that left hook, make it look like it's coming at one height, and it comes a little lower, just a couple inches lower, and it lands. All right, let's check in with Freddie Roach, the hottest trainer in the land right now, who is in the corner of Ernie Zavala. Freddie, what do you see? Uh, it's been a tough night so far. Um, Ernie's um, working real hard out there, but this guy's really strong, and he get that, he's got that long reach, and uh, Ernie's been caught in the end of a couple of the shots, a couple of times too many. Yeah, I agree with you, Freddie. The time that savala has been caught is when he's been standing straight up, pulling straight back. Yeah, pulling straight back. It's dangerous, and you can't be on the ropes with this guy. He needs to fight in the middle of the ring. He depends on his legs a lot, Freddie Zavala, and that's okay if you do it perfectly, but if you do it like that, from a little too close, you're gonna get nailed. Yeah, you are. Uh, this guy, tough, tough guy, um, a lot of pressure. Uh, I, I thought Ernie's breaking him down a little bit with the body shots, but this guy's coming back again. Where uh, do you want him to fight, Freddie? You want him to get out of there, get on the outside? He needs to be on the outside. He can't lay in the ropes with this guy, because this guy's dangerous on the ropes. He can punch like a mule, looks like. And you get hit punches you don't see coming with this guy. You do. He, he kind of loops his punches over the top there, and uh, he's very effective right now. All right, Freddie Roach, we will let you get back to work in the corner of Ernie Zavala. And by the way, congratulations on your win with Manny Pacquiao this past weekend as Juan Valenzuela continues to come forward. Places a right hand right there that staggered Ernie Zavala, Teddy. And again, Zavala depending on his legs. So when you depend on your legs and you do it from too close, Joe, you're going to be straight up and you're going to get nailed on the way out. And that has hurt Zavala several times tonight. Boy, oh boy, Brian and Max, does Juan Valenzuela make for good TV? Let's head back to the studio and check in with our gang there. We'll get you right back out to San Jose, but last night a very special night for all of us. The Theodore Atlas Foundation Dinner, a charitable foundation that... Well, Teddy, your father would be very proud, and once again, you're making a difference in people's lives. Well, the people that are coming in and supporting the dinner, the celebrities, the people that come and pay for the tickets, they're the ones that have allowing us to do those things and i applaud those people i applaud the celebrities and i applaud all the people that walked in there put their money down and allow us to help some people thank you and juan valenzuela getting right back to work here in this eighth round let him go let him go big seventh round he had especially that closing minute 26 of his 29 connects were power shots Five. seventh round Sensational effort from Valenzuela. Mouthpiece being addressed here. See, it's a funny thing. It's a fine line, but Zavala, he actually on the outside can have a little edge. He can catch. He can catch Valenzuela before Valenzuela gets into his punching range. If he extends his punches, he can get those shots off and he can catch Valenzuela first. But he has to stay outside and he's got to get those punches off before Valenzuela crosses the line and gets into his punching area. Watch Valenzuela, he loops them, he breaks his elbows a little bit, and he curves those punches all the time. So he's got to get to a certain distance to be effective. And the last couple of rounds, Zavala has cooperated with him. He's allowed him, by laying on the ropes and by allowing Valenzuela to come in, he's allowed Valenzuela to set up shop in close where he's effective. Another right hand comes in. It's been an interesting turn of events in the career of Juan Valenzuela. Started off a young kid learning on the job. Took two losses in his first three fights as a pro, but since then, this is what it's been all about. And see, Valenzuela gives you the idea that he's just chucking punches. 
The fight's been stopped now. That's the it. corner has stopped in Zavala. But Valenzuela thinks in there. He's not just chucking. He threw a couple punches up top, and then what did he finish with? An uppercut. An uppercut that Zavala did not expect and did not see. That is some thinking by Valenzuela. Not a guy who's just chucking leather. A guy who's thinking about what leather he is chucking, where he's chucking it. Good job by Valenzuela. We've seen it time and time again from him in the past two years. Ask Julio Diaz, ask Ricardo Williams, the former star Brian Adams, and now you can add Ernie Zavala to the list of victims of Juan Valenzuela. Here's a look, Teddy. Once again, Valenzuela, first of all, he's allowed to get into his punching distance in close. He throws to the head, he misses, so what does he do? He comes upstairs from underneath with the left uppercut again. The first couple of shots, they miss. He doesn't mind. They're set-up shots. Again, Valenzuela misses the right hand. Again, he misses it. Comes back with the left uppercut. So Valor never saw that punch. Once again, Valenzuela allowed to get into good punching distance. Misses the right hand. The benefit of coming back with a punch, it'll land off the miss. And the left uppercut landed off the miss right hand. And Zavala never saw the uppercut. Juan Valenzuela gave us a taste of everything. The right hand, the left hook, and the uppercut that finished it off. His 19th win.